Good evening. On behalf of Lewis Academy Now and the Thomas Jefferson Alumni Action Group, or TJAG, thank you for joining us and welcome to the See It, Be It speaker series. Lewis Academy Now and TJAG are thrilled to present this programming together as two organizations striving towards equity in education here in Fairfax County and beyond. TJAG is a group of more than a thousand TJ alumni that seek to enhance accessibility, inclusion, and innovation within STEM education in order to develop well-rounded and ethical 21st century leaders. Lewis Academy now represents hundreds of community members, parents, and students, and is an independent organization formed to bring an Academy for Public Policy, Government, and Human Rights to Fairfax County's John R. Lewis High School. Academies in Fairfax County Public High Schools offer specialized courses that combine academic and career preparation. The Lewis Academy would be a nonpartisan program designed to encourage civic engagement and develop student awareness of the processes of change through various forms of federal, state, and local government. But enough about us, let's get started. Tonight's conversation is available in both English and Spanish. To hear the Spanish interpreter, Look for the globe icon along your bottom menu and select your preferred language. We will be recording tonight's discussion and though your fellow audience members won't be visible, your questions will be recorded as well. In addition, you'll want a smartphone or similar device handy towards the end so you can join in the game of Kahoot, which will be explained later. So without further ado, please welcome Makia Little co-chair of the See It, Be It speaker series and president of TJAG. Good evening, everyone. And thank you so much for joining us for today's um, See It, Be It speaker series. We are really excited to have a, a leader who just exemplifies public service all the way from Pennsylvania. I'd like to introduce Marita Garrett. All right, thank you so much, Makia. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to participate in tonight's speaker series. Thank you so much. And we are going to get started so our audience can get to know you. If they haven't already read your bio, can you please tell us about your childhood? Where did you grow up and where did you attend high school? Yeah, so um, I'm originally from Akron, Ohio, so Summit County, Northeast Ohio, for those who may be uh, familiar. And so, um, you know, Akron was a great place to grow up. It's Ohio, so it's flatlands. You can bike, ride your bike everywhere, sidewalks. So um, just really, really great. And everything's only 15 minutes away. So um, everyone knows everyone. And I went to high school um, in Akron at uh, St. Vincent St. Mary High School and for any NBA fans and people who follow uh, the journey of one one of my classmates was LeBron James so that always uh, comes up in topic when I mention Akron and then when I moved up here I finished up high school at Sewickley Academy in uh, Sewickley Pennsylvania. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And that makes a lot of sense because like you, LeBron James is very civically engaged. So we appreciate hey. understanding that connection, maybe something in the water and that. Hey, it's the Midwest work ethic. That's what they say, or that's what they say, but yeah. <laughs> so when you were in high school, what did you want to be when you grew up and how did that influence your decision to attend college and more specifically to major in psychology? Yeah, so, um, wow, you take it back. Okay, so um, I wanted to be a pediatrician. And that's what my goal was when I was younger. Um, I hated getting shots. So initially, when I would go to the doctor, you know, get your vaccines and stuff, I'm like, this isn't fair. I want to grow up so I can do this to kids. And, you know, right, <laughs> not really, was it at first coming from a place of love, but then it was like, you know, doctor, pediatrician, really wanting to help kids. I had an amazing pediatrician um, growing up. So I just loved and adored her. And I was like, oh my gosh, she gets to, you know, work with kids all day and everything thing. And really the root of it was helping people. Mm -hmm. So um, how that transitioned into college and majoring in psychology, um, I started off college pre-med and within maybe 
three, four weeks, I thought, okay, you know, pre-med, you have to be a biology major. Mm -mm. College biology is not the same as high school biology. <laughs> um, so I took a couple, you know, general courses in other fields and psychology really resonated with me. And that was the one where it didn't feel like, um, you know, cumbersome to go to class like I was excited I'm like wow you can apply this to everyone and just kind of that curious nature of wondering like what made you do that and what made you say that so um you know seeing it through with psychology for undergrad and then you know eventually getting my master's in psychology as well too nice um so kind of along those lines you know being in psychology was there a specific event or series of experiences that sparked your interest in public service and civic engagement? Uh, well, growing up in Akron, Ohio with uh, my mom and my grandmother, there wasn't an option. We had to get involved. So uh, <laughs> there wasn't, you know, an aha moment. It was like, nope, we are going to go vote. I don't care if it's a special election. Um, you're going to school after we vote. So we got to get up early or, you know, whatever. Also volunteerism, um, you know, helping out at the kitchens. You know, my grandma would always say, especially she was born and raised in Jim Crow South. So, you know, first of all, for her to have the right legal right to vote, you know, they didn't take that for granted. And then additionally, always that sense of community giving back. So it was always that, you know, um, if you're able to give back, then that's what you should do. So I was raised with that sense of volunteerism and public service. And, you know, that continued also through high school um, and going to a private Catholic school, that was actually a requirement, you know, to part of graduating was doing volunteerism. So I would um, tutor elementary school students, read, I was a camp counselor, Ooh, don't get me started, but I was a camp counselor for a couple months there, but it's just been something that has progressed. So civic engagement, public service, almost is kind of like one in the same to me and really a part of my DNA. Interesting. Um, and you got your start in politics as a councilwoman. And yeah. I saw that you were instrumental in seeking and receiving $2 million in grant revenue for Wilkinsburg, Wilkinsburg Borough. Um, can you explain to our youth what grants are, um, a bit of an overview of what organizations and entities providing grants typically look for, and the importance and potential impact of grant funding. Like what are they designed to do? Yeah, absolutely. So for us, um, and I'm just gonna give a quick like background Wilkinsburg and why you know we needed certain grant funding. So uh, Wilkinsburg, predominantly black community, uh, we've experienced decades of disinvestment. So when I ran for um, council 2013 and got on 2014, it was myself and about four other new council people. We came ready like with new ideas. We didn't want to do the status quo. We knew like, okay, let's hop in there. And so two of those things were definitely increasing community engagement because I'm a firm believer that the community, the people need to recognize their voice and be active in the legislative making process. Additionally, thinking outside the box yet at the same time, not reinventing the wheel. So what monies are out there to help us, you know, address blight, to help uh, revitalize our main street uh, infrastructure, especially in Pennsylvania, such an older state, a commonwealth, you know, our bridges, our roads are crumbling. And those are things that people don't maybe look at or, you know, think what is quote unquote sexy, but, you know, those are the founding blocks of a community. If your street has mm -hmm. potholes and, you know, cracks um, deteriorating, you're unaccessible or inaccessible. So, um, so some of the things we did, but what's key in grant funding, and I want to tell this to the students and those mm -hmm. listening, relationship building, because mm -hmm. it's one thing just to ask for money, but you need to get to know these entities. So what we would do as council people, we would set up meetings and renew relationships with county economic development officials and those in the state economic community um, development departments. We also work 
with neighboring boroughs and neighborhoods, um, intergovernmental cooperations, because sometimes you can apply for shared grants and services and they like to see collaboration. So if they know, you know, hey, if we give this um, organization $10 million, we know that's going to positively impact three other boroughs. So mm. when seeking grant funding, people want to see, you know, one, that um, it's something sustainable, but two, definitely collaborations of relationship building. And that has proven to really sustain as I've started my own nonprofit a few years ago that because of relationships I've built and seeing the work that I can build upon, people trust, you know, the work that I do and really the vision uh, innovation that I bring behind it. So that is what led to, um, at that time, over $2 million in grant revenue and funding. Previous administrations on council, you know, were just like, oh, well, we just expect tax taxpayers, you know, but no, you know, we have a declining population and only 38% home ownership. So you can't depend on one subset to um, cover all the expenses for the borough, nor is it fair to. So, you know, do some work, put a little oil in, um, you know, roll up your sleeves, some hard work um, and get imaginative and bringing some resources, specifically financial support to our community. Love that creativity. And those seem like some really like wise nuggets of, of wisdom that um, our, our students will, will keep with them and take with them in their relationship building going forward. Um, one of the most fascinating things I learned about you is that in 2017, you were elected mayor of Wilkinsburg with 65% of the vote in a four-way race. What would you say were your keys to success in such competitive fields? Ooh, yeah, that, wow, that was crazy. <laughs> um, and I also have to add, I actually ran for re-election for my council seat too and won that. So I was actually running uh, two races. Uh, so four, yeah, four years wow. removed. I feel like I could breathe. Um, <laughs> but you know what? The key is, um, and I feel like people say do the work and, you know, I feel like that's almost um, an overstatement at times, but really it is. You can't discredit the work. So, you know, I, people, to me, when I had, when I had 65% of the vote in that four wave race, what really resonated with me was that my community liked and appreciated and respected the work that I had done the past four years on council mm. and carried that over into, you know what, yeah, we like her vision of her platform and we trust her to take that on to being mayor. So again, it goes back to building that trust and that relationship. I don't, you know, if I hadn't been on council and done that work for those four years, I know it wouldn't have been the same, you know, turnout and, you know, like, yes, Marita for mayor, um, you know, all those things, Garrett got it. That was an another hashtag. Um, <laughs> but so you know, that, that said a lot. And really, it was, um, I always have a model when I also tell, you know, those who are planning to run for office, those who are running for office, leave no door unknocked. Mm. You know, don't just go by the super voter list. And especially in Wilkinsburg, a transient community, I want to also reach out to the people so they know they have a reason to vote. You know, I'm civically engaged and minded. So I'm going to be out at every election. Not everyone's like that. And as we know, local elections, you don't get the same turnout as you do in presidential elections. Um, so we can't just assume and try, oh, they're going to come out and vote. No, you have to meet those people. Again, it goes back to that relationship building and meeting the community where they're at. And that's just how I view my leadership is really meeting the community where they're at. And so, um, so that's, you know, with that resulted in that they entrusted me to take, you know, the next four years, take the vision of Wilkinsburg and lead it, um, you know, now. Wow. That is, that is fascinating. And I'm sure you have created some really, really big shoes. I pity the mayor that has to come behind you. Um, pity the next mayor. No, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm really glad that you bring up the fact that, you know, a lot of people need a reason to vote and how, um, you know, off uh, our local elections don't typically get the attention that is needed when a lot of laws and, and legislation that directly impacts the community is decided by those, those, those seats, right? And one of the things um, that Virginia uh, kind of intentionally did was set its local elections, its state and local elections on off cycle years. So 
um, like our governors and, and lieutenant governors are campaigning this year, who in the world usually votes in a oh one, you know, in a in a, in a one year um, or in an odd year even? So um, it's really something that's important in in, in the Commonwealth of Virginia that uh, we remain civically engaged and pay attention to when these state and local primaries and um, general elections are. So thank you for 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 bringing that up. Um, one of the things that I saw in your experience that not only resonated with me, um, but that I felt would resonate with students in Northern Virginia as well, were the Wilkins, Wilkinsburg community conversations yeah. you started. Can you tell us about that initiative, why you started it, and how young students could potentially use your model um, to have impact within their own communities? Yes, absolutely. So community conversation started because um, 2013, when I was door knocking, uh, my first campaign, and I, again, no door left unknocked. So, you know, door knocking, wanting uh, the voters, my neighbors, residents to know who I am, what I stand for. And in 2013, that was also the election for the city of Pittsburgh uh, mayor. So Wilkinsburg mm. is an independent borough than the city of Pittsburgh. And I knocked on a door and there was... Um, the can our current Pittsburgh's current mayor is Bill Peduto. So there was a Peduto yard sign in one of the residents' home. I didn't think too much about it, whatever. So, you know, I knock on the door, do my spiel. Hi, I'm Rita Garrett running for council. And he's like, oh, that's cute, you know, but I'm really concerned about <laughs> cute. right, you know, that's cute little girl. Go on. Uh, but <laughs> but he said, you know, I'm really concerned about electing um, getting Peduto as mayor. And I was like, what? you can't, we're in Wilkinsburg. He's like, yeah, I know. So I'm voting for Judah. I was like, no, you can't, we're in Wilkinsburg. And he's like, yeah. So I'm like, no, Wilkinsburg is a separate municipality than the city of Pittsburgh. You literally cannot. And I like told him the whole slate. He was wow. like, what? And I was just like, oh, wow. And so that continued on. I was, I was door knocking that you really had residents, neighbors who did not realize we were our own entity. So you don't even know your neighborhood. You don't even know the identity of where you live. And that screamed to me crises. And that yeah. also made sense to why we were in the position we were at at that time, because you're not going to have engagement if no one has that identification. <sighs> If no one has that identification, mind the dogs in the back, everyone, <laughs> life of a public servant doesn't stop in the Zoom world, um, but you're not going to have that um, connection, I should say. So immediately when I got elected, I was like, okay, we need to address this. We need to increase civic community engagement. As much as I would love for people to have come to council meetings, council meetings really aren't that sexy and we don't provide food and it's a Wednesday night so I get it so I was like let's bring council meetings to the people but let's make it a conversation let's have some food networking and we would have speakers but they could only talk for five to seven minutes and then we would have Q&A and then spend the last part just talking with one another well what's going on in your block what initiatives do you have is that your block watch can I be a part of that what's going on so just really having a conversation so that it's not that you know, oh, you got to go to council to be in the know. It's like, no, you are the know. You're creating, you know, um, the engagement within your own community and connecting with your neighbors. Mm -hmm. Also, the key thing to that, and I want to share with the students, is that empowering others to use those resources. So you can bring resources, but if you're not empowering or encouraging other people to use them, then it can be for not. So we really had speakers who were intentional and, you know, leaving with action items so that we weren't coming back. They were on a quarterly basis, so we weren't coming back talking about the same thing, that it could be like, okay, we're working to address that. What's next on the list? And that's where that was. So that model is something that, you know, I think all ages really should be using because mm -hmm. we need to make sure that we all are connected in our communities, workplace, education, whatever, you know, the field may be. But um, yeah, if you don't know where your home is, that's pretty selfish. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was wild. Like I was just like, what? And then I was also like, okay, so y'all don't pay taxes. Cool, cool. Um, cause you know, you definitely know you're in Wilkinsburg by the taxes, but, um, but yeah, but it was just, it was mind blowing. And I was like, you know, forget any other policy, um, you know, any piece of legislation, we need to get the people to know 
who their neighbors are and what Wilkinsburg is and the resources within Wilkinsburg that we already have before we could really step to the next level. I love that. And I, I, I feel like that's kind of, you know, how even this series started where, you know, conversations based on trying to create more opportunity and trying to ensure that there are more resources so you don't have uh, people, you know, feeling like there's a scarcity mindset. Like we can always make more opportunities. It's really a matter of taking advantage of those that are made for you and maximizing your potential um, through those resources that people have invested in. Yes, so exactly. <laughs> speaking of investing, talk to us about Civically Inc. and yes. what that organization means to you. Yes. So Civically Inc. is all the things, really it kind of lines up with my vision as mayor, but we all know government, um, bureaucracy, excuse me, bureaucracy, things run slow. As much as I would love to be like, oh, we can just sign off on the, no, it goes through a process review, which is understandable. You need those checks Three and quotes. balances. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, right, right. Uh, but you need those checks and balances. So whereas with civically, it allows me to do the community work that addresses more of the immediate and direct needs. So some of our programs are free store Wilkinsburg, where it's a it's actually a free store. People are like free, and you know, still come be like, how much? Oh, you, no, it's free. Um, you, but you know, just to address people who are maybe in a temporary hardship, um, who need you know clothing, baby formula, pet food, shoes, uh, household items. Again, we're a very transient community and really honestly with COVID we all you know see we're only one um, one non-check away from you know not knowing where we're going to be where we're going to be eating so again just again making sure the community at its basic levels are being taken care of uh, community conversations is a part of that we also have the Wilkinsburg Fresh Market where twice a month we provide free fresh uh, produce to residents and we are really emphasize no ID, no income required because we want to make sure people are getting this produce. We believe in fresh free produce for all and we're really trying to eliminate food insecurity. Um, nice. And then additionally, we've also started working with Action Housing, um, a local nonprofit around here about housing issues where, you know, um, thanks to the CARES funding and COVID relief, we've been able to get, you know, people able to stay in their homes and funding to um, catch up on rent and also, you know, helping the landlords and their relief. And then we also, wow, that's a lot, but uh, and then we also, <laughs> and then, um, you know, focusing on the economic, uh, economic development side of things, you know, I kind of look at civically as a wraparound. We're going to take care of you right now, but we're also looking out for you in the next five, 10 years. So with the uh, Hunter building, which is a capital development project, we purchased a building in the central business district of Wilkinsburg. And also mm -hmm. something else I want to stress to the students ownership ownership that is yes. the main key to wealth building to making sure you stay in your communities to make sure you don't get displaced in your communities is ownership and we realize okay wow we're doing all these great services and community needs but if we don't have the actual place that we own to stay we nice. can just, you know, go and be left out of the own narrative that we're trying to create um, and help instill in our residents. So we purchased that building and that's where Civically is housed and the free store is housed. Yet we also want to redevelop it to make it more of a public mixed use space. We want something that the community can come out to. We want to do um, a First Friday's arts event, showcase the arts, artisans, artists, artisans in Wilkinsburg, small business owner support. So really trying to provide that or not trying, providing that holistic approach to community, community building, also showing you can have community led development. We don't need top developers from a Chicago, New York, DC to tell us what we need in Wilkinsburg. We got it right here. Let's build from an asset based, you know, mindset. So civically, I get excited about because that's where 
I can do the touch. I don't have to wait for ordinance to pass. I don't have to wait for resolution. Did somebody start off with this check? Where are we at with it? It's like, nope, did it. Boom, boom. Let's go. Let's keep it going. And so civically is my passion because I'm really, you know, big on instilling self-reliance so that, you know, um, we're in a place where we don't always need to have a grant, that the right. community um, members are active. They realize they are their own social change agents. We don't need to wait for change. We are the change. So I'm talking about civically all day, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's my, as you see, that is my, you know, that's my baby. That's my passion and what really, really excites me. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, that's why I didn't even put put a full question. Just this top. Just want to say specifically, right? Just <laughs> drop it, right? <laughs> and I'm and I'm glad that you bring up ownership uh, because one of the things that I really um, try to encourage my mentee to to understand is with ownership, think first scholarship, um, and the importance yeah. of applying for scholarships. Those are really the first grants, right? That that a, that a student really, applies for yes, are scholarships. Yes. And they may seem overwhelming, but being able to graduate as debt-free as possible, if college is something that you're interested in pursuing, will, will, will start you off on a financial path to the ability to be an owner and, yes. and to, to pursue that, that ownership um, option and generate that generational wealth uh, for your family. And so... Um, you know, your grades, we tell my kids all the time, your grades are really your job, right? right. And <laughs> once you get to your, you know, your junior and senior year, you have to start looking at those scholarship opportunities. Um, every, every dollar counts. So fill out those yes. applications, get those people to write your recommendations because it will set you up for success um, once you get to that collegiate level. And yes. um, our I love it. Scholarships <laughs> are the first true like grant applications. That is so true, right? <laughs> <laughs> so in both TJAG and Lewis Academy now, we are big advocates of diversity to include diversity of experiences. Can you tell us how you ended up on the advisory board of the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra? <laughs> yes, it is. So I actually love the um, opera symphony. I shouldn't say actually, but I love it. Um, I, my mom... Back in Akron, her employer, um, they had a subscription and, you know, a couple of times when it was like, hey, can't make it, would you all like to go? So I remember seeing the Akron Symphony Orchestra and I was just like, what? And I played clarinet. So, you know, a little bit of the band geek in me, was, you know, just amazed, like, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, and then, um, so fast forward to now. And one of the great things about the Pittsburgh region, it's really rich in the arts and uh, culture. So you have um, the Symphony Orchestra, you have, actually you have a cultural district where there's four, actually it might be five theaters all within like a four block radius. So there's always, pre-COVID, there was always a show to, you know, see, go out and do. And so there's been a partnership with the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra um, with Wilkinsburg, where they do a community concert and they would bring some of their artists to Wilkinsburg and perform at the high school. And um, a couple of the people, you know, always saw me attend and I always say, great job, you know, maybe could they come to this event or they would either actually see me actually come to the symphony or Heinz Hall, that's where they perform here. And then they reached out and said, you know, hey, would you like to be on the board? I'm like, what, you know, what do you, <laughs> what? Wow. Um, and that, you know, but it's fun to be on the board of not only things that you believe in, but you actually enjoy so yeah. like when I, you know, pre, again, pre-pandemic, when I would go to a show, me on the board's like, oh, wow, like here as a board member, like, you know, I'm actually helping to further advocate this work. So um, yes, but I tell, you know, especially again to the students that are listening, you know, diversify your experience. I mm -hmm. feel I've had, I've been able to dabble in a lot of different things. And I also um, give a lot of thanks to my mom for pushing me. You know, I'm an only child, so she didn't want me to be bored. So even if I didn't want to do things, you know, dabble. So <laughs> ballet, tap, dance, soccer, field hockey, I've, I've done the gamut, you know, all of it, clarinet, bass clarinet, um, all of it. And so I love that because then number one, you know what you don't like, but number two, um, you know, it opens your eyes and it just, you know, gives you more exposure. And so I say, you know, to you all, go see 
opera, play, symphony, um, play a sport that maybe you may not be, you know, you think that great of, you may end up loving it, a language, just different experiences, because those are things that are always going to stick with you. So don't, you know, get caught up on necessarily the material things of right now, um, or what's right now, instant gratification. Like I can't, I can't remember really what I wore in high school, but I remember where I went. I remember what I did. I remember, you know, two a day practices for volleyball. Those are the experiences <laughs> that stick with you. So getting as much, um, you know, that diversity and differences um, only really helps to benefit and shape you even more as a person. Love it. Love. I love passionate people and um, you definitely exude that passion. Um, so what, actions, initiatives, or uh, civic engagement projects are you most excited about like right now? Ooh, um, that may be like too policy hack. Um, okay, well, I'm just gonna name it anyway. <laughs> People figure it out, but um, so number one, I'm, you know, I get super geeked out about local elections. So even though I'm not running for re-election um, this year, uh, right now, I'm supporting other candidates who are, or who are running for election. So I get excited, you know, like, okay, let's go get them out there. So have a couple meet and greets, canvases that um, help to organize. And again, I'm all about pipelines, like building a coalition. Um, you know, I don't know how long I'll be doing this, but I want to make sure that I've done my part to build a foundation to help those after me coming on board. So that's always what gets me excited when I see kind of like the next generation stepping up or even more of my peers stepping up to the plate. Um, additionally, and this is something I don't want to say it's like controversial, but I'm actually working with our local community development corporation and some of our residents. We're actually looking at a referendum to merge with the city of Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And that's something I don't take lightly, but in leadership journeys, Again, it's about the people, about public service. It's about the public. The public comes first before your needs or you're representing them. And to me, even though that means there won't be um, another Wilkinsburg mayor, Wilkinsburg council, this is really what's best for the residents, for the community of Wilkinsburg. We already share, going back to intergovernmental cooperation, we already share a lot of services with the city of Pittsburgh. Let's make sure our residents are getting the most bang for their buck. And when I say that, not necessarily in a money way, but just like getting the most quality of life that they deserve and that they work towards. So we have extremely high taxes, but the services don't match up to that because we are a small borough, so we can only do what we do. So really looking again, like I said, I always think take care of you right now, but I'm also looking out for you five, 10 years down the road. And this is what I believe needs to happen for residents so that you have, we increase home ownership. Part of the obstacle, and you know, as we mentioned how ownership is key, part of the obstacle for home ownership here is because our taxes are so high. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of people who actually just leave and don't purchase homes here because they're like, no, I, I can't afford this. I will have to go elsewhere. And then you just lost out on building the next generation within Wilkinsburg. So for me, the future, um, the sustainability of Wilkinsburg is tied into this. And, you know, people will say, so wait, that means like, you know, what happens with your government? And I said, we'll still have a voice, but yeah. everything needs to be reimagined. I feel like that's a word everybody's using this year. But once you get stuck in a way that, no, Wilkinsburg has to have a mayor, has to have a non-member body of council, has to do that, you can't, leadership can't be rigid because life mm -hmm. isn't rigid. You got to flow right. with it. You got to evolve. You have to adapt. And this is where we're at. So I get excited about it. Um, because it's just like, I see the five, 10 year benefit, actually really immediate benefit, but I really see like, wow, we do this, you know, these homes will be occupied. We get more students in our schools, family, because mm -hmm. I love this community. It's amazing. Um, it's beautiful. We need more people in here to sustain it and more people want to be here. It's just, you know, the financial obstacles. Wow. Well, you know, what, what, what I find most refreshing about what you're sharing right now is, is there are a lot of um, public figures and political leaders who are like married to their seats. 
they're married <sighs> to their roles and they're married to yeah. their positions and not necessarily the work or the people yes. come first. It's, you know, well, what can I do to stay in power? And yes. so um, I, I really appreciate you setting the example for our young people that it's not about you as an individual, it's about the community and what's best for the all, you know, for the whole. Yes, because um, the minute it becomes about you, you're in a world of trouble. You're going to take everything personal. You're going to have a chip on your shoulder. You're going to be, what? It wasn't about you in the first place. It was about this. So you, it's about the public, public service. <laughs> Love it. So for that, um, and, and before we move to our lightning round, yeah. um, what is your kind of parting wisdom to the youth of Northern Virginia who uh, may not have a mom like you that, that you know, forces them to, yeah. right, <laughs> to right. kind of, uh, uh, engage in, in, in all of these activities to give back to the community. How, how can someone, um, you know, a teenager in, in high school uh, start their own path to public service and getting involved? Yeah, go with where your interests are. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, anything huge when I actually, oh, I didn't tell this story. Um, I actually, my first time running for office was when I was 13 running for eighth grade social chairperson. I did not, um, I did not win that election. I think it was rigged, but all that to say, <laughs> it wasn't that I was excited about being part of government. I love the social aspect of school. I love meeting with people. I love the different events you have. So that was the interest mm -hmm. that led me to run for that. So if you, um, you know, are interested in debate, you know, join debate club. If you're interested in, you know, hey, our schools need to um, stop using plastic so much, research that, present that to your student government or the administration. But just, you know, base how to get involved on your interests and don't feel it's just something like, you know, oh, I have to know exactly what's going on in this area. If you're interested in topic, there, I guarantee you, is a plethora of ways to engage, participate, bring that issue that other people may not even be aware of to there. So I would say start with your interests. And the other thing I would say, don't wait your turn. You're never too young. You're mm -hmm. never too young. We see the bread of thought. Uh, Thornburgs, um, we see the um, Amanda Gormans, you know, and that's what, you know, I just get so excited about that. But, you know, do not wait your turn. People will try to dismiss you because you don't have experience. Well, how else are you going to get experience? You have to start somewhere. So just recognizing that if you have that passion, if you have that interest and believe like, hey, I belong here, this is what I want to pursue or, you know, delve further into, do it. Love it. That is wonderful advice. Um, wow. This has been great. Um, and um, yes, we are going to move to the lightning round to okay. spice things up a little bit. Right, let me get my water real quick. All right, right. <laughs> and uh, my kids are, are like my, my trusted advisors. So I like vet everything through them. They okay, help me with the Kahoot and all that jazz. So, so this is going to be really know, right? All right. Nike or Adidas? Oh, we're going there. Um, <laughs> presently, I have to say Adidas. Nice. <laughs> Apple or Samsung? Samsung, Droid for Boom. life. Boom. Droid for life, not changing <laughs> it up. Sorry, All I'm right. rigid on that, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what current phone do you have, model? I have the uh, Z Flip, so I'm trying to take it back. I'm trying to be a generational, uh, you know, bridge the gap from, you know, our days, flip phone, yes. but still touchscreen. <laughs> everybody, Samsung should pay me, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> All right, Hawaii or the Caribbean? Caribbean. Nice. Flight's too long to Hawaii, I heard, but I've been to the Caribbean a couple times, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tupac or Biggie? No. Okay, what I'm going to say, I'm not going to choose. I'm not going to choose. I'm just going to say they have two different styles. Okay. So if I'm in one mood, um, mm. then yeah, Tupac. Um, okay. But if I'm in the other mood, then Biggie. I will, mm -mm, don't do that. You try to set me, ooh, try to set me up. Hey, it's blame it on the kids. Blame it on the kids. Blame it on the kids. I see y'all. <laughs> All right. A lake house or a ski resort? I'm gonna go with Lake House. I don't like the cold, so yeah. <laughs> but you live in okay. I know. <laughs> the, I know. Don't 
<laughs> Don't, I know. <laughs> All right, Christian Louboutin or Retro Jordans? Um, what about naturalizer? But no, um, so right, <laughs> I'm about comfort these days. So definitely won't be the Louboutin. So it will be uh, Retro Jordans. <laughs> Got it, got it. All right. For for our uh our STEM folks, math or science? Science. 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 Okay. And I know there's a big scramble on like all of these, Xbox or PlayStation. Uh Nintendo. That's where I'm at. <laughs> That's where I, I'm an 80s baby, 90s made me. Um Nintendo, du y'all. Duck Hunt is all where it is. It's Where's where it's at. at. Mario <laughs> Go-Kart. We were Mario Go-Kart before like the next two reboots. So, yes. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> you know, my kids actually trip me out. They're like basic stuff. Like, mommy, did they have goldfish when you were a kid? And I'm like, really? What? Okay. Yes, no, yes. They do this. They words. do this. Aren't those, they? Are, those are fighting. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> love my kids. All right. <laughs> Power suit or sweats? I would say power suit, suit, but now with COVID, you got the best of both worlds. You're right. Business up here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Exit. You got you. All right. Last for the lightning round Cairo, Egypt or Paris, France? Oh my gosh. I got to add one to my wish list. I would say uh, Cairo, Egypt, because that's where motherland started and continent of Africa. So I'm going to go it. back home. <laughs> Love it. Awesome. Awesome. All righty. So now is the time in our program where we move to the Kahoot. And okay. um, I am going to share my screen so that everyone can see the game pen. And I'm gonna share the sound too, because sometimes they jam on this thing. Oh. All right, so you put in that game pen, 515-6349. Let me make sure my kids are uh, good. All right, we got one player. Oh, and the winner of Kahoot will receive in the mail this lovely Lewis Academy Now drinkware, high quality, 15 ounces. Hold your favorite beverage. <laughs> All right, we'll give everyone about two more minutes to join. The pen is 515. Six, three, four, nine. Don't be shy. Stop on up. <laughs> oh, there we, we go. <laughs> All right. We have a not to Maya. I feel like not Maya is Maya. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess not Maya doesn't want to win. <laughs> <laughs> Give another 30 seconds and then we will start. Six, three, four, nine. All righty. And we. All right. Okay. Eight. All right. Last call. All right, we are going to, oh, we had eight and now we have seven. All right, we're gonna start and go. Mm -hmm. Two and a one. All right, what was Marita Garrett's major in college? Who's this music? <laughs> oh, 
All righty. And the correct answer was psychology. And we have the majority getting that correct. Very good. Ash is at the top of our leaderboard, followed by ER12 and not Maya. <laughs> All right. What percentage of people mm. voted for Marita Garrett when running for mayor in a four way election? The options 51%, 75%. 25% or 65%. All right, we have four locked in. All right, the correct answer was 65% and majority got that one. Our leaderboard remains with Ash at the top and ER12 followed by Natmaya. Go on, Ash. <laughs> <laughs> in which city did Marita Garrett grow up? Miami, Florida, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, New York, New York, or Akron, Ohio? And again, majority got that right. That is Ash. Are we still at the top? We are. Awesome. Okay. Okay. It going looks strong. like Suze is making a move. All oh, right. see the fire. Right. Yeah, the fire. <laughs> All right. How much money in grant revenue did Marita Garrett generate Oof. for the Wilkinsburg <laughs> Borough? One billion dollars, right. three hundred million, five thousand, or two million. All right, we got six answers locked in. Just waiting on one, just waiting on one. And six got it right, two million. Very, very good. These people pay attention. Give me a few more years, I might hit that 300 million. So, you know, <laughs> thank you ever um, manifested it, put it out there. <laughs> Love it, all right. Ash is holding strong to that lead and so is ER12, the second place. And the last question of the evening, what is the name of the nonprofit organization Marita Garrett founded? Civil Rights Inc., People Inc., Civically Inc., or Socially Inc.? This is our heart. Better not break it. No, no, don't. Please don't. <laughs> 2020 was wow. enough. Woo, come on, y'all. <laughs> All right, there is one more. All right, that might be the deal right there. Who wins? Not Maya in third place. Ash, you had it for so long. ER12, congratulations, ER12. Congratulations. <laughs> that is so exciting. So I am going to put the um, email address in the chat, ER12. Please email us your mailing address so we can get your uh, gift in the mail. And Marita, I really cannot thank you enough for joining oh, us today. Um, I have been looking forward to this conversation for a long time. You too. And you too. Um, your energy and just desire to, to give back to your community and, and take care of those in Wilkinsburg um, is so admirable. And um, I wish you Godspeed as you pursue expanding your work with civically and um just thank you thank you for your service 
Thank you, Makia. Thank you, everyone, um, and especially the TJAG team for, you know, creating this organization, for having this space, and, you know, you all looking out for our future and the next generation, so it's exciting. Um, you know, you all have my information. Please share if any of the students or those, um, you know, watching have any questions or looking for any insight, feedback. Again, I'm about building that coalition, so please do not hesitate to reach out. This has been a pleasure. This is like really fun. I'm like, what's the next round? But I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm going to turn it over to our co chairs of the Lewis Academy Now team, um, Ms. Michelle Dwell. Thank you. Wow. Marita, uh, this was such a fun hour, and I'm just going to pile on the accolades a little bit. Thanks for your story, but really, thanks for your excitement. And especially I wanna say thanks for your innovation. Um, I, I heard innovation around alliances, around relationships, your willingness to build capacity in the people around you, coming up behind you, and Civically Inc., uh, another innovation that's touching everybody in your community. I could sense your passion, your commitment, um, I used to live in Pittsburgh and just a few, just a few blocks from the Wilkinsburg line. So you're South, familiar, okay. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. I okay. Go to South Braddock Avenue, right at Forbes. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and one street, yeah, on the line. Okay, right on the line. Yes. Yeah. okay. Yeah. So you're making me want to move back. I mean, mm -hmm. kind of. <laughs> <laughs> come on back, come home yeah. anytime. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. And some reminders, housekeeping, check out our social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, our website, email us. Our next speaker will be Delegate Mark Keen, and that'll be next Wednesday, April the 28th. Until then, go in peace, ownership, and make good trouble. Thanks, everybody. Good night. <laughs>